Good morning, YouTube. Hey, everyone out there in survival land. How you doing? Oh, they're frisky. Oh, look at that. Look at them go. Now, these things ignite really quick. See how quick I just barely touched that. Hey, YouTube. Freedom for Kaz here. Yeah, I know. I got my reading glasses on. Oh, well. What can you do? Anyway, has anyone seen the New York Times today? It was uh, Friday, October 29th, 2010. There was two uh, articles in here about the um, about the BP oil spill. One of them was here. And the other one was up here. I don't know if you folks got a chance to read this or not, but uh, I went through and I highlighted some of the uh, interesting articles and I just thought I'd share it with you. It's rather... Rather interesting because it's almost a tale of two different stories on the same piece of paper. So I'm going to read the uh, this one first. It says, Spill inquiry thrusts Halliburton into harsh spotlight once more. And this is getting into like the second paragraph here. In recent years, the giant energy services company has found itself under scrutiny over allegations that it performed shoddy, overpriced work for the United States military in Iraq, bribed Nigerian officials to win energy contracts, and did brisk business with Iran at a time when it faced sanctions. Interesting. Very interesting, considering it was owned by, uh, let's see, um, Dick Cheney, and uh, I do believe uh, George Bush at one point in time as well. But let's continue. On Thursday, which would have been the 28th, of November 2010, a government inve investigation panel said that Halliburton might have played an important role on the April, in the April explosion of the Deepwater Horizon platform in the Gulf of Mexico by supplying cement that was that the company knew was unstable to BP, which BP used it to seal the well. Halliburton has recently blamed BP, the owner of the well, to the uh, of the failing to test the cement and make, making other errors that led to the accident, which killed 11 people and spewed millions of uh, barrels of crude into the Gulf of Mexico. Halliburton has a history of walking on the energy high beam without a net. It goes on to say, because we have been a, because we have been a very aggressive company working on very high profile types of projects, when anything goes wrong, we will be front and center. The company, which was led by Former Vice President Dick Cheney from 1995 to 2000 has drawn repeated fire from some of its past actions, mostly involving its Kellogg Brown and Root subs subsidiaries, which in finishing selling in 2007, last year for example, Halliburton and KBR agreed to pay, now we turn here, agreed to pay $579 million to to so settle charges brought by the Justice Department and Security and Exchange Commissions in connection with bribes that KBR had paid top Nigerian officials over a decade, these companies still, still face criminal liability in Nigeria over the episode which involved contracts to build a liquefied natural gas complex. Several experts said on Thursday that the report by the staff of the Presidential Commission in the investigating and the accident could have legal and business consequences for Halliburton, which is based in Houston. Investors certainly concerned sending the company stock plunging 16% within minutes after the re release of this report. Isn't that something? Now it goes on to say here, it says, in the report, investigators said that in internal tests run by Halliburton had found that the cement mixture it had developed for use at BP as well, called the Monocondo, did not meet industry standards for stability. Halliburton had shared some, but not all the test results with BP, and the companies proceeded to use the faulty mixture. Okay, well, it goes on to say about how the rig exploded and things like that, all right? Well... You know, they're still under investigation, and it continues on by saying, 
Robert McKenzie, the Managing Director for Energy and Natural Resources Research at FBR Capital Markets for a former cement engineer, had a different view, calling the stock market response on Thursday an overreaction. I don't think a written report by non-technical people is going to affect industry perception. He said, aiding that Halliburton does billions of dollars of work each year and not one job makes it makes its reputation among their comp, comp, customers. Okay, so let's go to the next story, all right? That was about pretty much all the bribes, what's going on with Halliburton and how they do a, a lot of dirty deals, all right? So now let, let's go to this one here. It says, companies knew of cement flaws before big rig blast. Washington, D.C. Halliburton Officials knew weeks before the fatal explosion of the BP well in the Gulf of Mexico that the cement mixture they had planned to use and to seal the bottom of the well was unstable, but still went ahead with the job. The Presidential Commission investigating the accident said on Thursday, which was the 28th of October 2010. In the first official finding of responsibility for the blowout, which killed 11 workers and led to the biggest offshore spill in American history, the commission staff determined that Halliburton had conducted three, three tests that indicated that the cement mixture did not meet industry standards in any single test. These, the results of at least one test was given on March 8th to BP, which failed to act upon knowing that the cement wasn't going to work. Another Halliburton cement test was carried out one week before the blowout on the well, which would have been approximately April 12th, April 13th, April 14th in that area. And they also knew then that the cement was not going to hold. Although Mr. Barlett did not specifically identify the cement failure as the sole, even primary cause of the blowout, he did make it clear that in his letter it was certainly had done its job and kept the highly pressurized oil and gas out of the well, well bore, there would, there would have been no accident. As the article continues, and I'm not reading the whole article, I'm just pointing out some really hot details here. Okay. Furthermore, the panel found out that Halliburton and BP both had the results in March showing that a very similar foam slurry designed to the one actual to, to the one actually pumped at the Monaconda well would be unstable but neither of them neither company acted upon the data the commission appointed by president obama in late may is led by bob graham the former senator and governor of florida and william k riley a former administrator of the environmental protection agency the commission is scheduled to hear its scheduled to present its interim findings on the cause and the accident on November 8th and 9th in its final report to the, to the president in mid-January. So there you have it folks. Both companies knew there was three tests done on the oil, on the cement. Three tests were done on the cement. And in all three tests the cement failed. Both companies knew this. But yet they went ahead and proceeded by drilling the well and pouring this subpar mixture of cement into the well and all they did was hope for the best. Now I'm going to leave a link to a, a video I made some time ago. It's called Oil Crisis in the Gulf Connecting the Dots. There's going to be a link to that. Okay and now this video here connects all the dots between, if you remember, when Boots and Cooch was bought by Halliburton, we found out uh, that uh, the company that makes Nelco um, uh, is, is uh, owned by Warren Buffett, uh, partially owned by Warren Buffett. So, you know, this, this keeps on continuing to go and go and go. But... Um, that paper was from today, the New York Times, Friday, October 29th. Two headline stories, and the link for my other video will be underneath. Check out those links as well. Thank you, folks. Have a great weekend.